Hope you're all doing well. Oh, we're halfway through February. It's taking forever. <laughs> That's just because I'm anxious to get planting my garden. But I just thought I'd take uh, a few minutes. I had a couple people uh, notice in the background on some of my videos my vintage Pyrex collection, and they would. I had a couple people ask me if I would talk about it. No problem. I love to talk about it because I love my vintage Pyrex. So I guess first I'll start. I'm just going to have a sip of tea. Mm. First I'll start with why I collected it. One, I love anything vintage. Love vintage stuff. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe things seem simpler. You know? I mean, vintage clothes are awesome. They actually made clothes to fit women with hips <laughs> back then. But what drew me to this particular one, the first one I'm going to talk about was the color primarily. I love teal, as you can tell, and I loved the print. It was very farmhousey. Uh, so we're going to start. So this print is called, I got some notes so I can make sure I, I stay on track. This is called Butter Print. And this was made, um, it started in 1957 and they produced it until 1968. And it's just beautiful. It's got the Amish farmer and his wife, wheat, a chicken, I guess it's a rooster, uh, corn, and then that starts, starts reheating again. And it came in the teal with white, or it came in the white with teal. And it was the first printed pattern on opalware. Um, it was a result of a growing market with turquoise on white and white on turquoise arm Amish print is what they called this. So I guess these colors were very popular in 1957. It's also the very first uh, one that did the Cinderella bowls. And that's what this design is called. This one and this one would be considered Cinderella bowl. And this was the first time they introduced that. Um, Cinderella bowl is basically bowls that can fit inside one another and you can have you can pour things out of each in either side um it was designed by a man named john philip johnson um let me see they actually had um other prints with this amish print that came out in orange and pink i've never seen that so i think if you see it it's probably pretty rare um let me see i'm just looking so it came out so the very first things that came out were these Cinderella bowls, and then they decided to start doing the oven, refrigerator, and freezer sets, which that would be this. Um, these are mixing. This is a mixing bowl. This is a little casserole set uh, dish. It's one of my favorites. And the butter dish. It was discontinued in 1968. Um, in 1963, I guess they released another one with the same similar color, and it had a snowflake pad, and I actually have one piece with that. I'll show you that in a minute. So I also thought it would be fun. <laughs> I wanted to look up how much in 1957 this would have cost. So I actually found an old advertisement. I'll just bring that up to the camera so you can see it. So that's the old advertisement I found. <laughs> and the original set, which was this, um, and this one in a smaller set, this, and the smaller one. So you got four pieces for $4.95. <laughs> I can't even buy one of these for $5 now. Um, that's not 100% true. I have one that wasn't in pristine condition, but she only wanted five dollars for it, so I bought it. But it had a lot, it has some wear on it. So yeah, I just found that <laughs> really interesting. Four ninety five for four of them. So I will show you. Now this isn't all of this set. I will take you. I'll take you over to the rest of them. So those are the rest of them here, up there on my shelving. That one, that one right there. Where are we? Sorry, I'm going to have to take you off. There we go. That one right there, that's the one I got for $5 because it wasn't as good a condition as this one. And this one also obviously had the lid. So that's another mixing bowl. The other size of that Cinderella in the white. 
in that because it was popular. I started collecting it because I love the color. Um, it has since become one of the most popular things to collect. So of course that drove the price up and harder to find. But that is, that's probably my favorite. So I'm gonna get these put away and I'll get my next set of vintage Pyrex out. As I was editing this video, <laughs> I realized that um, I forgot to let Grace know, my daughter, to try zoom in on the patterns um, on the Pyrex. And it's my fault, you know, we're all learning and I forgot to let her know. So instead of redoing the whole video over, I thought I'd just take a quick few seconds, come on and do some close ups and just add it to this video. So here we go. So the next one I'm going to show you, it's the only one I have in this. That's the snowflake pattern um, in the turquoise or teal is what I call it. This is what replaced the Amish print that I just showed you, the butter print. This is the only piece I have only because A, it's the only piece I found. I have not seen the snowflake anywhere around here. Um, the only reason I know exactly what I paid for it because I still left the sticker on. <laughs> I just took it off. So I paid $16 for this. It probably would have gone for 30 if she'd had the lid. So um, I do try to find the lids. Sometimes they'll have, some places will have lids for like a quarter, a dollar, and the lids are fine. They just don't have bottoms anymore. And I try to find them so they'll fit. But with the C word, we haven't been able to go flea marketing and antiquing for the last couple of years. So I'm hoping that's going to change soon so we can go out and start finding pieces again. Though I am running out of room where to put pieces, so I'm starting to get very picky on what I get. But anyway, so that is the one, and I just, it's snowflakes, and it's nice to have it at Christmas, but truthfully, I, I keep it out year round. This, this is called Horizon Blue. This is the only one, this I have. Again, it's the only one I've seen. Um, the color. This was released in 1969 in honor of the Apollo 11 moon landing. And it actually do, 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 was in McCall's magazine. Apparently this was going to be the next big thing in kitchenware. <laughs> um, and blue was very, very popular, I guess, that year. And that's why they were saying it was going to be so popular. Um, yeah, apparently the picture showed this sitting on top of the moon's surface with the Earth in a distance. That's how they advertised it. Um, but, but, but they came out with the Cinderella bowls. They came out with a three-piece baking set. Um, here's an advertisement. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the one with the moon. That would have been cool. But there's the advertisement for that. Shows up. And I ran out of colored ink. Sorry, so it wasn't in color. But these started at 49 cents for an eight ounce casserole or bowl. So this is, this was for, I'm looking here, it doesn't tell me the size. It says it was made in USA, which is cool. And it says it's ovenware. So this was meant to go in the oven. So you could get something like this for 49 cents or a complete casserole three piece set for $7.50. <laughs> That is interesting. <laughs> I, could, I think I paid, it wasn't very much for this. This one wasn't very much for the size. It wasn't, it's in really good condition. I just thought it was cute and I liked the color. So that's why I got those. And the other piece I have, that's only one piece. It's not Pyrex, it's actually Corningware. I absolutely loved it. Not only because of the color, but the, and this is called uh, Medallionware. And this one was called avocado medallion wear, obviously because of the green. And apparently this came in blue too. Um, I liked it because I love the shape. Um, I didn't have a loaf pan in anything. And I love the color. And this reminds me of an Irish Celtic design. That's why I loved it. So finding, doing some research on this. This was not for sale in stores. You could, this was only made for Shell Oil Company as a, what did they call it? Some kind of promotional Thing. I'm assuming that maybe if you ordered oil to heat your home and you ordered so much, they, they threw in some of these for free or something. Or you you had to collect so many points and then you you trade them in for these. So these were never sold in stores. This came out between 1972 and 1974. 74 is a good year. Um, 
so you couldn't you couldn't buy it and apparently they're very hard to find which shocked me because ugh, I'm trying to remember where this bothers me when they put the stickers like this and I can't get them off um I'm sure I can probably get that off if I try a little bit harder yeah oh I never even looked at the bottom to see what it says uh, nine by five by three pan corning ware for a range and microwave made in USA. So it honestly does not look like it was used that much. So I just thought it was cool. And then to find out you couldn't even buy this and to know it's rare. I find that it's so weird because I can't remember where I got this, but it's just one of our local little places. We haven't gone far, but yeah, I couldn't believe to think that was way, uh, rare. So I've never seen it in the blue. That's for sure never sold in stores yep okay so that's the end for those three pieces i'll get those put away and i'll grab the next set so my next one this one really is uh nostalgic for me this one is called spring blossom green it also got called crazy daisy at one point this was started in 1979 and it went to 1981. this is the set my mother had <laughs> she had the bakeware for casserole dishes and she had we had the plates and up until just recently she still had them um, she thinks they're still in their camper <music> um, but yeah so this was called spring blossom so 1972 1979 so this is a casserole dish and these are tiny pieces that I managed to get at a yard sale. So I got this one at a yard sale and it came with the lid in pristine condition. It really looks, I guess Pyrex made things to last. A little mixing bowl. This would have been probably a set of four. And my favorite, the gravy boat with the little platter. And the reason they look so amazing is they're made to last, but they're made with lead paint <laughs> and lead paint made colors and things last. Um, so I'm not real crazy about using them. I don't want to use them anyway because they are so old, but the lead paint. Uh, in the 70s, when this set came out, this was insanely popular for new brides. I guess it was the number one uh, thing on the wedding registries that, pe that brides wanted was this Spring Blossom Pyrex set. And I found an ad. Um... There's the advertisement. This was before my colored ink ran out. I hope you know I'm not boring you with the facts. I just find them interesting. So this started at $1.49 a piece, apparently, depending on what you wanted. I'm, I'm going to guess maybe this was like $1.49 and they went up in price. Um, again, that that's a riot because even though this is not as old as the butter print, it's very popular. So I know I paid more than $1.49 for some of these. Um, I don't, I'm not crazy, like, as much as a collector I am, I won't pay, like, anything. I'm not that kind of collector, so I really, like, even the Amish butter print, the most I spent was, I think I paid 40 for the casserole dish that was rectangular that I showed you with the lid, um, and it's because I did not have anything like that, and that was a little bit much for me to spend, honestly, the 40, so I, I don't spend a lot on them, so yeah, I just, I thought that advertisement, it's neat to see, too, what the kind of things they were eating. They made a banana bread. Looks like they made some kind of lasagna and a salad or whatever. But yeah, very cool. So that is Crazy Daisy or Spring Blossom Green. That's kind of what I want. Um, it was discontinued. I think I already told you that in 1981. And that this was the longest running um, version that they had. This pattern. It was the longest running pattern they had with Pyrex. So pretty cool and my mother had it when I was a child <laughs> so and I like the color green so that's another reason I collect it okay I've got a couple more to show you and then I'll get to I have a couple of fire uh, no it's not fire king atlas glass things that I collect uh, the next thing I'm gonna get is my fire king I'll show you that My next collection is one that's fairly new to me that um, I'm not even sure how I started collecting. Oh, I know, because I found it at a thrift store for $3. <laughs> that's why. So 
So this is actually Anchor Hawking slash Fire King. I guess Fire King slash Anchor Hawking because I guess Anchor Hawking, Hawking bought Fire King at some point. This was called um, Meadow Green and it was produced between 1968 and 1976. And this is literally all I could find about it. This one little piece of paper. Um, and I think that's somebody selling it online somewhere. So I have this. I got this at a thrift store. I will say, is it this one? We did not notice. Um, I don't remember seeing this when I bought it. There's a little chip here. I think it might've got chipped on the way home. She, they didn't wrap it the greatest at the store. So from now on, I on, when I go to the thrift store, I take a box with me and put my stuff in it. So that had a little chip. So that, would this would have gone inside this one. So there's this size. And this one still says Anchor Hawking on it. Oven and microwave safe. Made in the USA, holds one quart or one liter. So that one, so like I said, they would have meant been made to go inside each other and there would have been one more. Don't have that one. This one's cool because of the shape. I just liked the shape of it. So there's that design. And then my casserole with the lid. That was quite the find. Um, they're a little dusty. I just cleaned them too. <laughs> Um, and this one says Anchor Hawking, Hawking and Fire King. Made in USA, one and a half quart. You in, I'll just show you. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. No? Okay. I have a camera person helping me today. So she says you can't see it, but. Okay. So that is Meadow Green. That is it. So the other thing I have is not Fire King, but it is very cool. And I'm going to show you that one. I forgot. This one. When I bought this, I thought I was buying that pattern. And when I got home, it clearly is not the same pattern. Um, it's the divided tray. And it's made by Glass Bake USA. Like, I should have seen that before I bought it. But I love the divided tray, and these ones are hard to find. I couldn't find out anything about it. Glass Bake, um, I never heard tell of them. It was an American company, because it says it was made in the USA. But I don't know what this pattern's called, and I don't know much about glass bake. Glass bake. If anyone does, give me, let me know. Be appreciated. So yeah, I just got this. I got it for like three dollars at the thrift store. So okay, now I'll get the other set. So my daughter informed me that I showed you the wrong side. The pattern doesn't go all the way along on this one. There, that one I showed you with the divider does not match this. <laughs> okay, so my last collection is. Hazel Atlas Glass. It started in the 18, I think 1887. They had several factories in the United States. Um, they originally started off doing mason jars. And I actually have quite a few of these. Um, I love these because they have the measurements on them. So they're like a measuring cup in ounces. Um, four, eight, 12, and 16. Like, I love them. And I'm telling you, the, the glass just feels different than the new mason jars. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. They feel different. So they started off making these. And then as things got popular during the depression, they started making, um, dishes and I actually have a completed set here um, right here so this is a mixing bowl set they went out of business in 1962 the majority there was still a factory or two running into 1964 so anything after that I have nothing nobody bought them they were um, their own company and yeah they went out of business um, either in 62 or 64 depending on the factory actually called kitchen aids this this um Pattern it has nothing to do with the KitchenAid mixer. It was called Kitchen Aids because you had a teapot, um, mixing spoons, a uh, gas lantern. Uh, I think that's like an iron. A food mill. That's a food mill there. Um, some wheat. Yeah, so they were called Kitchen Aid. That was called Kitchen Aids. I actually just found that out. So um, this one's a little bit different. It has the food mill. Um, not a hundred percent sure what kind of tool that was, what they used it for. It looks like it's hollow inside and I'm going to say that's like a teapot maybe. 
so there you go probably got a lot more information than you wanted to know <laughs> but there's my pyrex collection um i like it it's cheery it's bright and it's fun. And I even, even my husband, now when we go, he'll find something and he'll go, hey, hey, I think I found <laughs> one of the Pyrexes you'll like. So I even got him a little bit of uh, checking out now. It's my Pyrex, my vintage Pyrex collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I like talking about it. Um, so I had no problem showing you all it. And if anyone collects Pyrex too, um, let me know um, down in the comments. Um, it's fun to collect. And it's fun to think about, like me and my great grandmother, or even my grandmother, using it, right? To know, like the Amish butter print, to know that that is, you know, over sixty years old, and to think, you know, how much bread maybe was rising in it, and how many casseroles were made, and how many potlucks did they go to? Like I like to think about that stuff. So, okay, there we are. I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And um, if you're new here, thank you. And uh, please spread the word. It helped me grow my channel. I, I, I appreciate it more than I can ever tell you. So take care. God bless you all. And we'll see you in the next video.